Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure from Waikiki Beach. Today, I can't tell you how thrilled we are because we have a Navy helicopter pilot. He's also a bull rider. But most astonishing and most thrilling of all is that this man, Chris Gokey, is an ice fisherman. I can't imagine anything more thrilling than sitting in a hut in the middle of the frozen tundra on a lake and hoping a fish will nibble on your uh, bait. Be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. You know, you were recording this on Memorial Day, actually. I think you're probably listening to it in the middle of football season. We're at this, we're actually recording this as the country is beginning to open up from the corona uh, crisis, I guess you would call it. And I'm so hopeful that right now on this beautiful Saturday that there's college football playing and that you're able to watch college football. So, um, and that there's fans in the stands and that everything is doing better. You know, this came as a real great surprise to us, didn't it? This, this whole shutdown, it came, seemed to come out of nowhere. But it, it doesn't surprise God. Uh, God. God lives in the eternal now. His name, I am who am, means I am existence. You know, when we're riding our motorcycles uh, together, filming Long Ride Home, we especially love these winding curves, you know, going through the mountains. But we never know what's on the other side of one of those curves. It might be a, a, a steep drop-off. There might be a, a semi-truck that's, that's jackknifed and crossing the road. There might be beautiful scenery. There might be a car that isn't paying attention to us because of the scenery and swerves into us. God knows what's around the corner. God doesn't live in Kronos, you know, this linear time that we're in. You know, I did, when I started this show, it was about two minutes ago. That's ancient history already. And now, since I mentioned I started the show two minutes ago, that's already come and gone. When you read St. Augustine's writings on time, it's just really powerful and cosmic how we live in this linear dimension. But God lives up and beyond that linear dimension. He lives outside the time-space continuum that he created. Uh, think about it this way. When I was, uh, I think, like in second grade, the coolest thing happened. The teacher said, we're going to draw a mural across the whole length of the classroom. So she put up butcher block paper or something across the whole length of the classroom. And we all got to uh, color with our colors certain things, like from the starting in the Revolutionary War to the westward expansion. I think I got to, uh, you know, color in a Conestoga wagon and some horses and people riding their wagon across the country. But when we, when I was doing that, all I could see was focusing on my horse and my my terrible ability to draw a um, a cowboy hat and a round circled wheel, uh, and I was just focused on that moment. But when I stepped back um, after f a few days of working on this mural, I could see the whole story all at once, and that's the way God is. God sees the whole story all at once, and He knows what's around the corner. And God can reap what he did not sow. Someone, his enemy, enemy may come in and plant uh, bad seeds. His enemy may come in, as, he, as Jesus said, maybe he'll come in and plant a, a deadly virus. But God is able to work all things together for the good for those who are called according to his purposes. God is not surprised. So um, knowing that, we know that we have no, we don't have no need to fear. All we need to do is just say, Lord, I abandon myself to your will. And, you know, I remember when I was testing for my both of my black belts, um, just a few months before the black belt test, I, would, I, I, I got injured for both of them. And, uh, and I, I remember thinking, um, you know, how am I going to be able to uh, pass this test? How am I going to be able to um, do this now? Because I felt so invincible, uh, so powerful. Here I am, I'm going to test for my black belt. I felt so awesome and so powerful. And suddenly with a little snap to my knee or to my calf, I was vulnerable. 
And we feel so like, oh, take for granted. Oh, I've got my checking account. I got my investments. I got my job. Suddenly you have no job. Suddenly your investments go down in value. Um, suddenly you're, there's illness in your family and you feel vulnerable. We take for granted uh, God's love and his care. And then suddenly we feel vulnerable and we learn to turn to him and say, God, uh, not what some would say. Some people say, God, what are you doing wrong? <laughs> the right response is, God, where are you? Help me to find your will in this. Help me to move in your power and grace. And it's not by might, but by your spirit. It's uh, when I am weak that I am strong. And, let, and learn to be strong in Christ and not so self-reliant. Rather, abandon yourself to God's will and, uh, and help him and, and, and avail yourself to his power, his grace, and his direction. So we have with us today uh, a friend of mine, Chris Gokey. So, Chris, how did we meet? <laughs> yeah, that, that was uh, the, the grace of God, that, how we met there. Um, I was getting ready to go on a deployment here, stationed here in Honolulu, Hawaii, and it got canceled, right, due to the, the health crisis, the pandemic. And I had already broken my lease and moved out of my apartment to go on this deployment. And then they postpone it and they cancel it and I have nowhere to live. So I'm looking at Airbnbs and VRBOs trying to find temporary places to live until they turn this deployment back on. And I find this place not far from where I was moving out of. And I was trying to figure out the parking situation. Because <laughs> I, I, I know most of these, parking these VRBOs, is everything. that's right. And, and most people that come here don't have to worry about that. They don't have a car already on island. They don't live here. And so I, I sent a message to the owner who I didn't know at the time to ask about the parking situation. <laughs> and when you bring up VRBO to write a message, it'll say the owner's name at the top. And it says, write Bear Wozniak a message. <laughs> and and I thought, well, this can't be the same Bear Wozniak I listened to on EWTN. Well, there's a lot and, of Bear uh, Wozniaks around. Yeah, right. Yeah, because they're <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> so that was my first question, actually, was, hey, uh, are you the same Bear Wozniak I know from e EWTN? And secondly, uh, how's the parking there? <laughs> you know, it, it, it was so cool uh, how God works, isn't it? Because we've had Absolutely, we've yeah. had a great. Uh, we, you're all, you've only been here a few few weeks, and you're leaving in about a week or so. But you were here during this crisis, and you and I would go down every morning. You know, I do my Ocean Sunrise Catechism every morning. People who want to watch that can go to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure fan page and like and follow us there. But uh, be, normally I do that from my house looking down over the ocean, but because of the Eucharistic famine, we went down to St. Augustine's Church, which is right next door, and, and we prayed and laid hands on that, on that, on the doors of the church after the catechism, and you led us in a decade of the rosary, you know? Yeah, it, it, that was so beautiful and so powerful because um, it was shortly after that that they started relaxing a little bit, um, the, uh, the lockdown. Yeah, the governor wouldn't mention a thing about opening up the churches in all of his statements. He said, well, you can have drive-by, drive-through churches, church services. And here in Hawaii, like we had like 40 active cases. And uh, some of us would come to, go down every Friday afternoon at noon and pray at the Capitol building right in front of the St. Damien statue. And uh, I, I, Cindy and I went down and we prayed the rosary. And then as we were leaving, another family walks up and they're praying the rosary. They were going there for the same reason. And I remember after uh, after that particular event, uh, they said they're going to open the churches uh, maybe in another week or so. And then all of a sudden, after one day morning after we prayed, they said we're opening up all the churches. To, uh, I think tomorrow, you know, it's like <laughs> that, it was like an right, instant yeah. change. And I'm so proud of our bishops, starting with our bishops in Minnesota, who told the governor, "We're going to open the churches. We're going to disobey you. Uh, we need to obey God and not man when it comes to." Um, the way that people were so prudent, the bishops were so prudent and wise, and how they were going to go about protecting people. We have churches that hold a thousand people, and they're saying only ten people can even come together. So, um, but we learned what we learned not to take the Eucharist for granted, huh? It, absolutely, absolutely. I've never felt so starved for the sacraments in my life until now, and and I I can truly say that I took for granted um, the freedom I had to go to the sacraments whenever I wanted. You know, I, I got to tell you, there's sometimes I don't feel like getting up and going to Mass, you know, uh, and uh, I'll complain a little bit about it. Of course, once you're there, it's different. That'll never happen again. 
I'll never feel like, oh, I want to just, you know, go for a bike ride or go surf. I don't want to go to mass this morning, you know, because we usually get up real early and go. But I'll, I'll never yeah. take the sacraments for granted ever again. Yeah, likewise, but uh, God always makes good come out of the bad. And, and just look at the incredible people that we've met each morning down yeah. that brain. Yeah. You know? well, and, and, and I, I got a coffee mug out of it too. Yeah, you got a long ride home coffee mug. I'm, I'm using the same <laughs> one. This is the Bear, Bear Wozniak with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. My guest, Chris Gokey, is a bull rider, a Navy helicopter pilot, and really the only reason we have him on our show is we're going to be talking about ice fishing here pretty soon. I can't think of a more <laughs> thrilling subject. Um, but we want to remind you guys, uh, Chris just became a member of Bear's Man Cave. Uh, go to our website, deepadventure.com, and look for the warning sign that says stop danger, don't enter. If you press that button, you'll learn more about our secret uh, Facebook group, uh, Bears Man Cave. And there you'll find uh, the Cave of, du- Cave of Adullam. Uh, King David, when he was on the run being chased by King Saul, he hid in the Cave of Adullam. And misfits, people who owed money or people who were, you know, incorrigible, whatever, or in trouble, they found themselves in that cave. And uh, they became a mighty band of warriors. So that's what we say we are at the Man Cave. We're a bunch of knuckle-dragging misfits, but together uh, by uh, sharpening each other's sword and challenging each other and encouraging each other, uh, we're developing into that 300, the, the 300 Spartans of Thermopylae, the 300 men of Gideon's army. Uh, a small group of men committed to each other and to the Lord can change the world. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Hey, man. I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. Mahalo for your kokua in supporting us. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to you, our listeners, for supporting the Bear Wozniak Adventure radio show at deepadventure.com. We would not be able to bring you our radio show with its uniquely powerful and gritty outreach without your help. You can become part of our pack. You can support our ministry by going to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak or by just going to deepadventure.com and clicking on the Patreon link and become a part of our outreach. That's deepadventure.com. Once again, mahalo for your kokua. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. Today we have Navy helicopter pilot and a bull rider, and more excitingly, a guy who knows how to the thrill of ice fishing. We have with us Chris Gokey from where the hand, the thumb of Michigan. Where were you from, Chris? Uh, tip of the mitt, so it, it, northwest lower peninsula. So when we rode through there on uh, shooting, I think we were shooting season six and seven, which won't even air for a couple of years. We rode up there by the cross in the woods. How far was that from you? Yeah, probably about 25 minutes or so from uh, our house and our little farm there. I used to go there frequently to pray, actually. It's it's such a powerful area. Um, You feel so small. It it makes you realize how big God is. Yeah. And and I know that was an important area for my father, too. He goes there regularly to to pray for myself and my siblings. So it's been really cool to grow up up there. It was really cool to uh, ride with a bunch of members of the Knights on Bikes, Ace Bagley and a bunch of his, his men. Uh, and women. Uh, Ace, Ace's wife actually rides her own motorcycle. It's, she's such a bad, you know, she's just such a, as we say, you know, a bad biker. She's tough. She's a, she's really a great biker, but has a lot of joy. But um, so when we were, uh, when you, when you, okay, for, for, let me ask you this. What is that on your t-shirt? It says rents. 
<laughs> it says rent rent is due. Rent's due. And now I saw that when you were praying the rosary one day and it yeah. had that bull on it too. And I go, Oh, I know what that is. Someone says, Why do you ride bulls? And it and you say, Because rent's due. But what is the real meaning of that t shirt? <laughs> Uh, it's actually a workout T-shirt. It's made by Under Armour, and it's uh, The Rock, Dwayne Johnson. It's his line, um, and he has different sayings on there. Rent is due, and I forgot what some of the other ones were. And, and I saw this one, and, and the well, what does that mean? Little, little bullhead. What, what does that mean? Uh, it, that, you know, he's got to work out every day, and and when uh, when it's time to work out, it's it's time to work out. You know, it's, it's like your body saying, "Hey, rent is due. Let's go. Let's go pay our dues and get to the gym." Amen. Yeah. yeah, it's so important to be consistent in your in your workout. You know, my wife Cindy has never uh, made a fist or or had to kick anybody, but you know, I love martial arts, so we've been doing MMA training every uh, you know in our living room. But we've been doing full on cardio, MMA, and and strength and plyometrics and everything in our living room. You know, we try to get in ten thousand steps a day. We we surf sub surfer tandem almost every day. But when you add the MMA workout into it, a 45-minute workout like that, you've, you've paid your rent. I feel like I really, yeah. I really – and I think I'm probably a little past due on my rent, you know, so yeah. catching we, up we on better, that. You better be careful, uh, uh, you know, teaching her MMA. You might be writing checks your body can't cash. Yeah, I know. It'll area. be nice. You know, if there's ever a problem, I could just say you take care of it, you know. But she said <laughs> she's a powerful athlete. She really is. You know, the thing that you two guys have in common that is that she was a barrel rider, and she also um, – she also did trick riding where she'd, you know, jump off the horse and throw herself across the saddle. And she would also ride, I forget what it is, where she rides on three horses at once. She stands up on them and rides them. Wow. So you have that rodeo background together, you know, which is pretty, pretty cool. Uh, but what, what went wrong? What was wrong? What, what, what twisted thing happened in you that made you want to ride a bull? I can't hard, you know, I love riding horses, but to me, it's not easy. And you're on a bull. So how did that, what went wrong? What happened there? What causes, yeah, what causes well, that? I like to call it, you know, completing your circles in life. And at, when I was about five or six years old, I was a big rodeo fan. I wanted to be a cowboy. Um, we had three channels growing up. I, I think, do, do you remember the, the analog TV antennas on the roof of the homes? Yes. Way back. Course. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we had one of those had maybe three channels and one of those channels would air um, big rodeo competitions, the the PRCA National Finals Rodeo and things like that. And my favorite bull rider was Cody Custer at the time. I mean, that was in his heyday. He was winning a lot. And I think it was in 92 or so. I was probably about six years old. The National Finals Rodeo was on and, and he won the world championship. And I don't remember the actual rodeo itself very much, but I remember seeing the TV screen. And at the end of each round, they would put um, a picture of each rider in their standings. And after the final round, I remember seeing Cody Custer's picture up there, you know, and said that he was world champion, how much money he won and, and all that. And something about that really spoke to me. And I said, you know, I, I want to do that. I want to be a rodeo cowboy. And, and, and granted the bull riding was only because he was a bull rider. If he rode Bronx or he was a calf roper, I probably would have wanted to do no, that. Well, yeah. yeah. No kidding. Yeah, well, with a name like that, a, a Cody Custer, he, like it has to be a cowboy, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, he um, he had a perfect cowboy name, and uh, and, and really a good all around guy. And you'll notice that a lot with rodeo cowboys. Some of them, I mean, they're they're strong, adventurous people, but a lot of them are very deep rooted Christians, and and they're good role models. Well, tell me, so. yeah, you know, uh, but my wife has a saying uh, after a bad ride. She goes, there's never nothing worse than a moody cowboy after a bad ride. <laughs> You've had some bad rides. What, what, what's what's That's your worst true. ride? Do you have, or did you block it yeah. out of your memory? I, 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 I do. I block a lot of them out of my memory. And, and most of my worst rides were so short. <laughs> I don't remember much. That's why they were bad. You, the, the shoot opens and I'm on the ground getting my butt kicked, you know? Yeah. So. <laughs> well, what's your, what's, what's one memory? I know you told me something about a, getting pushed up against a fence or something. Yeah, yeah. So we were at a rodeo in in Mason, Texas. It was actually um, this was actually the first real rodeo I, I ever competed in. And and granted, I, I'm still pretty new at this. I got started later in life. The dream started early. I went through a long process to really make that dream come to fruition. And a good buddy of mine that I rodeo with in his hometown, they have uh, the Mason Pro Rodeo, 
And that was our first rodeo we went to and we decided to make that an annual tradition. So the second year we're there at that rodeo and I forgot that the name of the bull I was on and he really actually probably wasn't even that tough of a bull. I was just, you know, didn't ride very well. And he came out of the, the shoot, started turning slightly to the left and then came back to the right and I got out of position and I was hanging off the side and he was, he was spinning to the right, right next to the fence. And every time <laughs> he, he, he turned around and, and, it, and, and granted the, the ride was probably only four seconds long, but it felt like it was going forever. Every time he would turn, I'd feel my shoulder brush against the fence. That's how close mm. I was. Mm. And then naturally I got bucked off and I fell right next to the fence and he kept stomping and turning and, and, and bucking there right next to the fence. And it was every time he would kick, it would slam me into the fence and I'm getting pounded between the fence and the hooves of this bull. And the, uh, the bull rider or the bullfighter comes over and this, I distinctly remember him, him saying this, which is weird, you know, in a traumatic situation like that. Right. But I remember him grabbing the horn of the bull to get its attention and saying, Hey bull, you know, over here, over here. And mm. the bull, the bull turned and ran off in his direction. I was able to get up. Well, the other bullfighter, there's, there's three of them out there. The other bullfighter walks over to me to see how I'm doing. And he had a smirk on his face and he says, Hey, uh, how many bones did you just break? And it was that bad, huh? It, well, it looked that bad. And I, I thought, you know, I mean, probably several, right? Mm, <laughs> and yeah. It, I, I stood up and I remember not feeling any pain. And I, I walked over, picked up my bull rope out of the arena and walked out. And later that night, I, I checked myself over. I didn't even have a bruise. And, 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 you know, a lot of that's, you know, luck, probably some divine intervention in there. Um, but I didn't even have a bruise. However, in that moment, in those three or four seconds that this all happened, I felt like I was probably breaking every bone in my body. There's no mm. way that this, this, you know, can, can come out good. Well, you know, you think about it. Uh, that's what Jesus does for us. He's our bullfighter. You know, what, what did he say? What did the, the bullfighter, and I, I've heard also they call him cowboy protectors, right? He, Absolutely. He, yeah. he comes up to the bull, grabs it by the horns and says, come over here. Yeah, that's, and that's right. really what Jesus does for us. You know, he the Bible says he was bruised for our iniquity, right? So, this, so that's Jesus. You know, the, the 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 bully on the block would be is the enemy, Satan, or the world, the flesh, and the devil. And Jesus says, "You want some of me? Come over here." You know, <laughs> yeah. and uh, and he, uh, I love that. I love that that uh, song by Carmen called "The Champion." I don't know if you ever heard it, but Jesus goes into the ring to fight Satan and God the Father is the judge and there's angels and demons and the saints and this and the and the you know the worst people in the world surrounding this uh, the fight and he's fighting uh, he's fighting Satan and he blocks every single blow you know when he's tempted in the wilderness and everything else God Jesus lives a perfectly sinful a sin, sinless life and uh, then at the very end though it's like Jesus drops his hands and the enemy just takes swings at him and he, he hits him with a death blow, and Jesus f falls to the ground. And then, of course, the 10 count starts, you know, to count him out, one, two, three. But he starts counting the other way, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, like before a rocket launch, 4, 3, and suddenly a demon starts shrieking, oh, no, he's alive. And he comes back, you know, in that it, he comes back as the champion and uh, defeats the enemy. And that's really what, what you think about that bull, the bullfighter who protected you. That's what Jesus does. He says, come over here. You know, I'll, I, I, will, I will destroy death. I will capture captivity. I'll re restore life. I'll make all things new. And this young man who's all broken up, getting beat up by your hoofs, he's going to walk away from this and have a, a beautiful, abundant life. We're talking with Chris Gokey. He's a... Navy helicopter pilot. He's a bull rider, strong Catholic, but most importantly of all, he, he, he knows the thrill of ice fishing. We'll be right back with Chris Gokey. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. 
Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Men, yes, we mean you. Go to deepadventure.com and check out Bear's Man Cave, a men's only Facebook group. Join the pack with other men as they challenge and inspire one another to manly virtue. Plus, you can dialogue with us in our regular video chat meetups. Plus, get your exclusive content. Join at deepadventure.com. That's deepadventure.com. Aloha, this is Bear Wozniak with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I know you're sitting there thinking, wow, I really like the Bear Wozniak Adventure. He has the coolest guests in the world. How can we help him to have his the radio show and his TV ministry continue? I'm glad you asked. You can go to deeperadventure.com and become a big part of our ministry. Uh, you, there's a link there to our Patreon page. You can become a Patreon donor. We have a, a web store that's actually I, maybe the best one in the whole universe. It's got so many cool things. We have uh, St. Benedict's Exorcism Ring. We have Single Decade rosaries for you guys who like to carry it on your motorcycles we've got in great cool t-shirts we got my books and other people's books so check out our website and also uh you know we invite you men to join the man cave and you can find all that at the at the website if you go there and you sign up for our newsletter you get a free audio book of my most recent book deep adventure the way of heroic virtue we send you an audio book uh for free and then you get uh the the radio shows uh uh, before they even air, like a, like a, a, the day before they air when you s- subscribe on the newsletter. If you become a Patreon donor, you actually can get the radio version of our web, of our, the video version of our radio show months before it airs because we pre record these. And also, you get all of all seasons pass for all the episodes of Long Ride Home, our motorcycle TV show. Plus, like right now, my son and I are, are finalizing a new episode. So in about two weeks, we'll be sending out the director's cut of that before we even send it to EWTN. So got too much to talk about at our website, but you got to go to our website and check it out. We're talking with Chris Gokey. So Chris, um, he's a helicopter pilot, bullfighter, ice fisherman. Uh, so tell us a little bit, let, let's go back a little bit in time. Tell us a little bit about your personal journey uh, of faith. Yeah, um, I was a cradle Catholic. My, my parents did an excellent job of forcing me to be in the church pew on Sunday. However, like, you know, typical, you know, American Catholic families, um, we often don't understand why we believe what we really believe. Um, but we know we need to be to, to church on Sunday. We know right from wrong. We know the basics. Um, she made sure I, I received my first communion and my confirmation in, in the sacraments, which was great. However, I never really got a deeper foundation than that. And I remember, I, when I graduated high school, um, I, I had this feeling like I needed to continue that. I needed to, I was supposed to go to church on Sunday. I'm going to continue to do that when I go to college. But I didn't really understand why, but I was going to do that. So I did. And, and also at the same time, when I, I graduated high school, I was, you know, one of the smaller kids in school got picked on a little bit, you know, and I wanted to go join a gym and I wanted to do something about that. I wanted to be a better athlete. I wanted to be stronger. I wanted to be a little bit bigger. So day one of college, I went to the gym. Wow. Um, I started working out, and I never looked back. And, and I, I gained, a, you know, put on a lot of size, got got pretty big. And that first year, I met an old guy from the community that used to work out at the gym on campus, and he invited me to a a young a young adult Catholic um, kind of fellowship. It was just men. And I think he was just looking to mentor people. And he started this thing at the church. And I, I went, I think we only had maybe two sessions. And then it kind of fell apart. Nobody really showed up. But I continued to meet with this guy once every few weeks. He ended up buying me on um, Easter. So it was towards the end of my first year. He bought me a Catholic catechism. And it was a really nice one. It was big, um, hardcover. And it was a very particular catechism that would play a role later in my faith journey. I mean, it, it had orange letters on it, a basic kind of font, but it was a very specific look to this catechism. I didn't really open it or look at it much, but I went home that summer, continued to go to, go to, uh, to church, and I, you know, long story short, felt like I was being called to the priesthood. 
Mm. Just I, just out of out of nowhere, I, I felt like you know the radio ads and stuff were speaking to me, and I did not want to do that. So I was kind of fighting God, and then a an usher at my local church um, walked over one Sunday, and I'm at church by myself, and handed me a brochure, and it was this brochure to go to the diocese, and it was kind of discover the priesthood kind of thing. Mm -hmm. and, and and that's when I just kind of. I mean, my, my heart sank because I felt like, wow, you are talking to me, God. And, and I, I've talked to you kind of throughout my life, and now you're talking back, and I'm not sure if I like it. Mm -hmm. And so I, I submitted to God. I said, you know what? I, I'll, I'll go do this. You know, if this is what you want me to do. I'll go do it. And on the way there, another radio ad came on, and it was t talking to young men interested in the priesthood. And it said, hey, remember, discerning priesthood isn't a commitment. You, it's just you're just discerning. And I felt more comfortable then. So I went there with a better attitude. Mm. And when I got there, I realized what God was calling me to. One, he was calling me to submit to his will mm. for once, you know, listen to him. Mm -hmm. But two, he peeled back the cover that was on the church to me because I saw it from the outside looking in. Mm. And I got to meet priests and I saw them as people and not just men of cloth. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, they, they showed me, um, you know, a, a few things about um, the liturgy that I just, hadn't really noticed before. And, and, and I remember leaving there thinking, wow, there's a lot going on here mm. and I need to open that catechism that was once given mm. to me and start looking at this. I need to, I need to take my faith seriously. So I went back to college after that. Um, and I'm on fire, ready to learn more. And then I meet another person in the same gym who is a very devout Calvinist yeah, and asked yeah. me about my faith, found out I was Catholic and boy, he just went on the offensive. Mm -hmm. And I remember Everything he said seemed, I don't remember what he said, but I remember feeling that everything he said sounded correct. He was able to back it up, and I yeah, wasn't well, able to he back was, up He mine. was text, text proofing, taking scriptures yeah. right and text proofing. A absolutely. And, Not um, taking them out of context. The Catholic Church, we look at the whole of scripture, uh, and he was text proofing, pulling things out of, out of context. Sure, yeah, and, and as a 19-year-old who didn't really have a foundation, mm. didn't understand how to deal with that. Mm. So I went home, or back to my apartment, and I was very confused and distraught. I remember having uh, an anxiety attack over it mm -hmm. because everything that I thought was true up to that point now seemed like maybe it wasn't, and I didn't mm -hmm. know which direction to go. And mm -hmm. that confusion, mm -hmm. and, and that's how the, that's how Satan works. Uh, you know, is he he instills confusion, mm -hmm. and, and and it causes this anxiety. And my prayer to God was, God, I don't know where to go. Just show me the truth and what which direction to follow. Um. After about an hour of this anxiety attack, I needed to get my mind off it, and I turned the TV on, and just a few weeks prior, I had discovered a, a radio or a television station, I don't know if you've heard of it, called EWTN. I've heard of them. <laughs> Mother Angelica. And, uh, so it was already on that channel. I turned the TV on, trying to get my mind off of you know, religion and Christianity. Mm. And when that came on, Father Karapi, I don't know if you remember him or not. Right. He was he was on there. I don't know what he was talking about, but he's standing at the podium. And the minute I turned the TV on, he lifted up a catechism. It was the same exact catechism that I had mm. laying next to the TV. And he pointed at it and he said, this is the truth. Mm. And then I turned the TV off because the hair on my neck stood up. Mm. And I don't know. I don't know what that's what he was talking about, what his sermon mm. was about. Mm. I don't know what happened before or after. Mm. But man, uh, that hit me hard. And I promised God at that point that on, if even if I don't understand something, I'm going to follow his truth until I get the grace of understanding later. Right. And, and you know, the, the catechism, oh, I love the catechism. Uh, of course, I, every, every morning we teach out of the catechism. I've read through it many times. But that's where you inform your faith, and that's where the full deposit of faith is. And people, you know, um, I do on my uh, Deep Adventure page, my Bear Watson Deep Adventure page, we post there, and I'll get a lot of people saying, oh, all you Catholics are going to hell, and, and text uh, you guys don't know the Bible and, and all this kind of thing. And I go, well, actually, we canonize the Scripture, and there's more Scripture read by Catholics every day at Mass than in any other Protestant church. And and that um, when you do the Liturgy of the Hours and the daily Mass readings, you go through the whole Bible in three years. Actually, we love we love the Bible so much that we change it to the altar back in the day because there was only maybe one <laughs> one Bible per per uh, per, per uh, diocese, perhaps, or per parish. And uh, we love the Bible, the gospel so much that we stand when it's read. And uh, but the Calvinist thing is 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 kind of really twisted, you know, that man is uh, totally depraved, and that God imputes righteous to us in a sense of a penal sort of uh, 
verdict, you, I'm acquitting you because Jesus paid the price, uh, uh, penal substitution. You're acquitted, uh, and I'm imputing righteousness to you, but you haven't been transformed. You're still, you're still uh, the picture of the dunghill with snow covering it. You know, you, you're, on the outside, you're white. You've been imputed righteousness, but in reality, you're still totally depraved. And uh, that's the, the Catholic teaching is is faith, and um, you need you need both both faith and uh, the, uh, the righteousness of God. Both of those things work together. Uh, faith, the word pistis in the Greek, that word faith means a transform transformational decision that changes your life. And I look at you know you're a weightlifter. I think about this. As Catholics, when and Jesus came, he didn't just come to die for us and pay the price, um, penal substitution, which we, is, is a false teaching. What he did is he came in solidarity with us in his incarnation. He became one of us. He took on all humanity, including our good things and our, and our sins. He took all that on. He lived a beautiful, uh, sin, sinless life. And then when he went to the cross, he was like a weightlifter. He was making all things new. It's called recapitulation. He bent down. I know you as a weightlifter, you probably love the deadlift, you know, or the squat. I love the deadlift. But he went down. He lifted that heavy, heavy weight. Deadlift is the heaviest weight, you know, basically. He lifted it. But then, if, but if you think about someone going and lifting it up, and not lifting not just the deadlift, dead, but lifting it up to your chest, and then he lifted us up, restoring our dignity. When you see his hands extended on the cross, like a weightlifter lifting us up, restoring our dignity that, that God gave us. Not only that, but because the Catholic Church teaches superabundant grace, he gave us even more than we could ever ask or think. Uh, he restored us and, and then some, so we could be called the, the, children, the, the children of God. And he, he, he invites us to be part of him as he's solidarity with us as we're baptized into his death and resurrection. We participate in, we're part of the body of Christ, and we participate in the Trinitarian, you know, love between the Father and the Son. So He came to restore our dignity, not to point out to us that we're just a dung heap, and He'll 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 acquit us, even though we're still just a dung heap. We'll be right back with Chris Gokey, helicopter pilot, bull rider, ice fisherman from Michigan. This is the Bear Wozniak adventure. Hey, man. I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. That's right. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Mahalo for your kokua in supporting us. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to you, our listeners, for supporting the Bear Wozniak adventure radio show at deepadventure.com. We would not be able to bring you our radio show with its uniquely powerful and gritty outreach without your help. You can become part of our pack. You can support our ministry by going to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak or by just going to deepadventure.com and clicking on the Patreon link and become a part of our outreach. That's deepadventure.com. Once again, mahalo for your kokua. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, this is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We have Chris Gokey. He's a helicopter pilot, Navy helicopter pilot. Uh, ice fisherman, bull rider, 
uh, lives here in Hawaii. We we got to know each other because he rented one of my he rented my my studio. I have a a, a studio right next to my condo in Waikiki. So he's only here for a month. And we got to know each other. It was just so cool to get to meet him, get to know his his life journey. So the thing about it is, is this Calvinist began to challenge your faith by pulling scriptures out of context. And it left you confused, but it, it pointed you towards, let me inform my faith. What did you find in the catechism? What, what, how did that, which, so you picked up the catechism somebody had given you, and you finally opened it. And Yeah, I, I, uh, I started to read through it, but I didn't really totally understand it all still. It was with the help of EWTN, um, you know, Dr. Peter Kreeft. Uh, I Scott love Hunt. Dr. Kreeft. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 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 all these heavy hitters, right? Dude, uh, we got them. We got them, don't we? Yeah. Yeah, we really do. And these heavy hitter apologists that help walk you through that is what really helped open my perspective. And that points you to this, Chris, is that the church, Jesus established a church. He didn't write a, Jesus didn't write a book, you know, he never wrote anything down that we know of. He probably did, but we didn't know, don't know of. Uh, but he, he, instead he said, I'm going to make you disciples and you will pass this on to each other. It's a people to people uh, transmission. You know, it's like you need people and you, and that's why the churches can't be a lone ranger. You got to be part of the church and avail yourself to the teaching of the church, you know, the people in the church. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that was and that was a scary time when I met the uh, the Calvinist because not only was I confused as to which path to go as far as my Christian faith is concerned, it almost uh, made me step out of the realm of, of of believing in God to begin with. Yeah, and because because if if I couldn't figure out what the truth was, then maybe there is no truth at all. Right. And, and that really that really kind of scared me. And actually, it upset me a little bit because I, I've never believed that a, you know, a, a, a Protestant it isn't saved just because they're not Catholic. Right. Mm. We don't necessarily b- b- believe anything like that. Yet he believed that about me. And in doing so really kind of shook my faith to the core to where I wasn't sure if, yeah, if, if there if, was a truth. Yeah. If someone is a, is a Protestant and wants to become a, a, a Catholic, we don't rebaptize them if they've been baptized with a Trinitarian baptism. We accept That's them right. as part of the family. Okay, and so that shook you because you're on the road to hell, man, and you don't even know it, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and they throw all so those that, things at you. Go ahead, Chris. Oh yeah, I was gonna say yes. Yeah, so, so that was a scary time, but but the other side of that, when when God answered my prayer, that was the first time God very explicitly answered a prayer for me like that. Mm. Yeah, and said, this is the truth. And kind of to, to give me that relief that even though I may not understand everything yet, um, I'm still on the right path. Praise and and God. To, kind of get, to, to kind of give me to give me that that sense of comfort because I was having an anxiety attack over it. Um, and I actually I, I cried after that in that moment uh, when he answered that prayer, I started crying. And it was the first time in my life that I can remember ever crying a tear of joy. And, and that was a very monumental moment for me. And then after that is when I started this this journey of trying to become a a, a manlier Christian, if you will, because mm-hmm. I struggled with this idea between uh, you know I was growing uh, in the gym, I was getting strong, I'm a better athlete, I'm feeling strong. And when you feel strong in body, you feel strong in spirit. However, mm-hmm. I had this false sense that Christians are supposed to be meek and mild. I still kind of mm-hmm. was holding on to that false perception, and that's when I discovered the both and of Catholicism. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm. both God and man, not a little bit of both, you know? So I was try- looking at it as I need to be a little bit manly and a little bit Christian mm. and no, there's a both and there. And, and the, the defining moment was meditating on the crucifixion mm. when in the crucifixion, I understood that there is both justice and mercy. Mm. And in, in that prayer, forgive them father for they know not what they do. Mm. Now, nobody knows the father, like the one who's consubstantial with the father, correct? Mm, so mm-hmm. for him to pray that, he has to know God is a just God or he wouldn't even pray that. Mm-hmm. Yet he also must know that he's completely merciful, otherwise that prayer's in vain. Mm. And justice and mercy in my mind at the time was synonymous with uh, you know, manliness and gentleness, steel and velvet. Mm. And I realized there's a both and there and you can be both. And then the final piece of it, what really brought it together, I had a friend who is also a very manly Christian. He's a Protestant, but uh, but one of my dear friends 
recommended a book called Wild at Heart by John Eldridge. Great book. And a great book. It changed my life because I realized not only is it possible to be adventurous and strong and be a Christian, not only is that possible, but it's crucial for, for men to be both. Yeah, people ask me, I'm, I'm torn between being a, a Christian and being adventurous. And I'm like, you know, our creed here is the most radical thing you can do in life is abandon yourself to the wild adventure of God's will. And people go, why yeah. not sure? Torn between taking care of my family and, you know, being adventurous. What could be more adventurous than bringing into existence an eternal being, a human life, yeah, and nurturing ab- that ab- human absolutely. life? Absolutely. Absolutely. That, that's spot on. And once you begin to embrace that, um, it changes the course of your life and all the decisions and paths you take. You know, it, it is responsible for for uh, pers- me pursuing my dreams of bull riding. It's responsible for pursuing this goal of being a Navy pilot. It's responsible for me um, to trying to deepen my faith in light of others who think maybe uh, I'm uh, I'm taking it too far. Maybe maybe I need to get on board this with you know the secular world a little bit more. Mm. And I'm able to stand up to that because because I was. Um, I was able to kind of essentially complete that circle again in that journey of becoming a full man. But when you're on a bull, you want to keep your COG, right? Your center of gravity. Absolutely. Yep. And that's what an informed Catholic can do. An informed Catholic who's, 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 who's studied the catechism and also presents himself to the sacraments, you know, to live the full Catholic life and is in fellowship with others. And men need to be in fellowship with other strong men. Uh, it keeps your COG, it keeps your center of gravity. You know, when I, when I uh, tandem surf, um, you, know, you know, people may know I'm a world champion tandem surfer. I'm lifting a woman in extreme lifts over my head while we surf. And when she's in that lift, the COG, the center of gravity is very important, right? That things be right. And I'm, and I'm not just going straight ahead. I'm carving on the wave. We're hitting the lip and going back down. But I can tell when a woman is in a lift, I surf almost exclusively. I surf basically exclusively with my bride, but when she's in a, when my wife is in a lift, I can tell when her eyes are not on her mark. You know, she's supposed to be looking in a certain place. Every lift has a certain direction her eyes look. Um, I can tell when her eyes move, even if she just glances to the left or to the right. It throws her COG. I can actually tell her, yeah. look up. Like I, the first time she ever experienced that was in our first competition together. And I could tell she was looking down, and I just said, look up, and it fixed everything. And, you know, sin in our lives is, the word sin in both the Hebrew and in the Greek, uh, the word harmatia, harmatia uh, is the word for uh, an archer missing the mark. You know, and you, 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 you shoot the arrow you, you, um, you, uh, where, you're, where you're looking, where your focus is. So our focus has to be on the Lord, and that helps us keep our center of gravity, helps us keep our sense of balance. You know, and, and, and tr- love and truth must go hand in hand. Justice and mercy go hand in hand. Fide et ratio, right, as John Paul II said. So we need to have the both end of Catholicism. If all I had was a muscle on one side of my arm and I went to drink this coffee cup, I would just end up throwing it in my face, right? I need to have the balance of the muscle on the other side. That allows me to have that dexterity. So, your faith was. So you, you, be, you. What, what, what are the? Give us one more uh, key lesson that you learned before we have to go in your Catholic faith. I see you have the rosary hanging on the wall next to your pilot's uh, uh, fatigues. <laughs> yeah. Tell us about yeah, the rosary. So, so, so the rosary. Well, so I, I didn't even know how to pray a rosary until I got to college, right? Um, and it was. Again, shortly after um, the Lord showed me the, the truth that I began spending more time in adoration. I'd go to the mm. Boston Sacrament Chapel. Mm. Uh, th- that town, I went to, to college in Northern Michigan University. It's in Marquette, Michigan. And they, they have uh, such a beautiful Catholic heritage there. And they have a, um, a chapel there next to the cathedral. And it's a 24-hour adoration chapel. Mm. The, w- one of the, um, I think it, it was one of the deacons there that gave me the, the code to it, that a code that, so you couldn't get in there after a certain time. He gave me the code to it and I would go there late at night and I would begin learning the rosary there. Mm. Um, and the reason why I felt called to do that is shortly before that, um, I think it was on my trip back up for my sophomore year before this experience happened, uh, 
a gentleman that at a restaurant I'd, I would stop halfway um, invited me to be a knight to join the Knights of Columbus. Oh, how cool. So, so in doing so, that they give you a rosary and a, um, a guide on how to pray it. Mm. And, I, and I thought, well, if, if this is part of being a, a knight, then I, I need to learn it. And so I, I would go to the Blessed Sacrament Chapel, and I figured, what, what better way to spend that time than to learn how to use this weapon? Well, you know that, what, you know what it is, Chris? It's like if you're going to be a manly Catholic, you better carry the rosary with you. I, we pulled over um, riding motorcycles once in Louisiana. I think it was one of our first episodes of Long Ride Home, and it kind of looked like a Mexican standoff, as they call it. You know, the the the, the uh, uh, bikers on one side, and then us showing up. And I said, "Gentlemen, choose you know, choose your weapons." Everybody pulled out a rosary out of their pocket. We've been talking with Chris Goki, a Navy helicopter pilot, bull rider, ice fisherman. Chris, thank you. I want to remind everybody to go to the deepadventure.com website and check out all that we're doing there. Until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Hey, man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out.